where we have studied about interrogative sentences in case of interrogative sentences how we can convert the active voice into passive voice uh, we have done up to uh, interrogative sentences now there are certain sentences where we get infinitives What are infinitives? Infinitives means where we are using to, and along with to, we are using v1 form of the verb. Okay. For example, if I say a sentence, for example, the sentence is, "You are to write it in ink." Suppose this is the sentence. So here we have to, and here we have write. So that means to plus v1 form of the verb. Now tell me whether this sentence is an active voice or an passive voice. You are to write it in ink. What do you think? Is this sentence written in active voice? voice. Okay. What about others? What about others? Uh, ma'am, I think it's active, active voice. voice. Active voice, ma'am. Because my subject is in the start. Active right. voice, ma'am. Right. You are to write it. in ink that means what are you using for writing ink so here ink is your object but this is the subject so if subject is in front that means this sentence is an active voice now what we'll do we'll convert this into passive voice so let me give you some of the options tell me which one is correct first is it is to be written in ink it has to be written in ink it was to be written in ink it is supposed to be written in ink okay or all are wrong means you don't agree with anyone you have something of your own to suggest tell me how many of you think a is correct how many of you think a is correct it is no, to be written what about others b uh, mama i think it's b okay what about c i think one okay anyone is there in d no see first thing the sentence is written in which tense it is in present tense right you are to write it in ink that means whatever passive voice we will get that is supposed to be in present tense that means the c option is already incorrect isn't it here what we have used we have used was so this is wrong secondly see in this case in case of d here we have used the word supposed right so we cannot use this word here suppose was not mentioned here in the sentence so that means this one is also wrong that means we are left with a and b now in case of infinitives where we have to plus v1 form of the verb okay and uh, we need to change it then what we do is 
basically we use 2 plus b plus v3 how do we change it 2 plus b plus v3 form okay so see 2 plus b plus v3 this is written in this sentence also in this sentence also but as here we have used is am are form so in the passive voice also we will use the same thing that is why here is will come so your correct answer is this one it is to be written in ink here a confusion will come many people will use has but don't use has just remember if you are using is am are any form in the active voice then that same form will remain in the passive voice also is it clear yes, yes ma'am okay so 2 plus v1 will be changed into 2 plus b plus v3 this is the rule did you all practice at home did you all start practicing or it's just that whatever we are covering here has remained that much only what happened nobody is answering no one has practiced Okay, now see, suppose we have a sentence like this. The teacher gave me a book to read. First tell me, is this sentence is, uh, written in active voice or it is written in passive voice? I'm active voice. Okay. So active this sentence voice. is an active voice, right? The teacher gave me a book to read. Now, what will be the passive form? Anyone, what will be the passive form? Is this one correct? Option A. I was given a book by my teacher to read. Option B, I had been given a book by my teacher to read. Option C, I have been given a book by my teacher to read. And option D is I has been given a book by my teacher to read. Tell me which one is correct. No, no, option A. Option A. Why option A? Why not B? Just now you have read a rule that when we have 2 plus V1 form of the verb, then what we do, we convert it into 2 plus B plus V3. So here we have to read. Then why didn't we convert it into 2 plus B plus V3? Can it be written in that way? I was given a book by my teacher to be read. Can that be your answer? 
means instead of to read here can we write to be read what happened say did you get the question what i am asking uh ma'am can you please repeat that yes i'm saying that we have been provided with a sentence the teacher gave me a book to read just now we have read a rule that if we have to plus v1 form of the verb in active voice then to convert it into passive voice we write to plus v plus v3 form that means this sentence when we convert it into passive voice it should be written as i was given a book by my teacher instead of to read here it will be to be read so this form to be read is it correct or this to read this is correct oh uh, ma'am to read okay what about others what do you think okay which was the main verb which was supposed to be considered here is it to read or is it this one mom i think it gave gave me it's the verb okay so what about others what happened to all of you today very tired tell me which one is more important here gave me or to read gave me ma'am right so here the main verb which is to be considered as gave not to read that's why we are not applying this rule right so the correct answer will be i was given a book by my teacher to read so just remember in a particular sentence you can get confusing words like this in this particular sentence you have one verb here and you have one more thing to focus here but the focus should be given on gave so as it was on simple past that's why we have used was given so i was given a book by my teacher to read right next is suppose if you have a sentence the sentence says i bade him leave the room this is the sentence now tell me is this sentence written in active voice i bade him leave the room or this is written in passive voice Active voice. active voice because i here is our subject so i bade him leave the room that's why it is an active voice now tell me what will be its passive voice he was asked to leave the room he was asked to leave the room anyone else can this be your answer he was bidden to leave the room by me third one is 
he was ordered to leave the room fourth one is just he was bidden to leave the room means by me is not written tell me which one will be correct e b what about others b five ma'am b five okay rest can it be a ma'am i think it's a okay and how many of you think it's c no one okay see i bade him leave the room so here i is the subject so obviously when it goes to the uh, passive voice form so it will be by me so here in only one sentence this is written in other sentences this is not written first thing second thing is there are certain words for example bit help and make okay bit help and make when we are using these words in passive voice they are followed by infinitives all right so here we have bid the past form of bid is bid so i bid him now as it is in simple past it will be converted into the same form so that's why he was bidden to leave this is the infinitive form 2 plus v1 form isn't it so whenever we have words like bid help and make we have to use 2 plus v1 form after the word and then the sentence continues and this by me this form will be present okay suppose the sentence was with help suppose it was um i helped him leave the room then what will be your answer he was helped to leave the room by me right suppose if the sentence is i made him leave the room then what will be your answer what will be your answer um, repeat again he was made to leave the room by me yes yes ma'am okay so just remember the rule whenever we have words like bid help and make we have to make sure that these words when they are converted in the passive form after them we are using 2 plus v1 form and next is whatever form we have here you know we cannot change this word if this is not there in the option if suppose he was bidden to leave this is not there in the answer you have other words like he was asked to leave he was ordered to leave then it can be correct but when you have the same word written in the form of b3 b3 sorry so then you have to use the same word so he was bidden to leave the room by me okay now there is one more word that is let suppose if the sentence says let me play is it written in active voice let me play or the sentence is written in passive voice mam passive okay what about others passive rest see sentences like let me play or shut the door or go away these type of sentences they are in active voice first thing they are not in passive voice okay 
So the sentences uh, means these type of sentences, they are in active voice. Now, if you want to convert them into passive voice, then what will you do? Let me play. That means what? You are asking for uh, permission to play? Isn't it? You are asking for permission to play? This is the meaning of the sentence? Yes, ma'am. So, how will you write this in passive voice? We can write, I may be allowed to play. Okay. I may be allowed to play. This becomes the passive voice. So, just remember if you have sentences like shut the door or if you have sentence like go away which are under imperative sentences okay then you have to use such kind of words for example in case of shut the door how will you convert it into passive this is the sentence shut the door then what will you write let the door be shut. let the door be shut that is one answer that is correct or else you can also write, you are ordered to shut the door. This is also correct. You are ordered to shut the door. This is also correct. Okay. So either you can write, let the door be shut. Or you can write, you are ordered to shut the door. Next is, suppose we have adjectives in the sentence. For example, if the sentence says, Rose smells good. That means what? Here we are using an adjective, isn't it? Yes or no? Hi, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So here we have an adjective. Now this sentence, this is an active voice. Rose is the subject. So rose smells good. How will you convert this into passive voice? The smell of the rose is good. The smell of the rose is good. Okay. Anyone else? Can this be your answer? Rose is good when it is smelt? No, ma'am. Sorry, this is R. Which one is correct? Um, option B. Option D. Okay. What about others? B. 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 Achha. What about others? A. Um, 
Ma'am, how can मतलब means rose it's a subject, so how can it become in the first sentence? Exactly. If it is subject, then how can it come at the beginning of the sentence? This is your question. Very good. What about others? Do you have the same question? We know that whenever we convert it into passive voice, then a uh, subject goes to the end. But in case of sentences where we have adjectives, okay, in those sentences, how you have to uh, convert it into passive form? The rule says the subject will remain in its place. Here, the subject will not go to the end. Then we will use the verb. based on the sentence okay then your adjective will be present after that we will use when then we will use a pronoun which will be based on the subject then we have to use a helping verb i'm writing hv for helping verb and then we have to use the v3 form of the verb okay this is the rule when we have an adjective present in the sentence in that case only the subject will remain at the beginning so this sentence is not correct okay now for this particular sentence here we have written roses but in our original sentence we had rose so this is also not correct now we are left with b and d see the subject comes at front this is okay then we have our verb so this will be in present tense only so rose is good when we have to use then we have to use a pronoun which will be dependent on the subject so as the subject here is rose the pronoun will be it as we are using this as we are writing the sentence in present tense obviously this has to be in present tense only so helping verb is in present tense and then the v3 form of the verb so rose is good when it is smelled this is correct here we have used past tense that's why this is wrong all right remember whenever you have an adjective in the sentence for example uh, if if a sentence says mangoes so what we were discussing is in sentences where we have um adjectives okay for example if you have a sentence where it says mangoes tasted sour then how will you convert it this sentence is an active voice isn't it yes ma'am so here we have an adjective sir so now converted into passive voice what will be the answer anyone just now we read the rule Here we have used past tense. So what should mangos. be the answer? Mangos, mangos? or sir when it is uh, tasted. When it was tasted. Okay. So can we write it in this way? Mangos were sir when. they were tested see we have yes, used the subject here isn't it subject remains same sentence was in past tense so where sir 
then we have to use when then we have a pronoun and then were tested isn't it is it okay yes ma'am anyone has any doubt this is the end of active and passive voice whatever we have studied in last class and whatever we have studied today all these rules are present in active and passive voice now any of the rules that we have discussed do you have any doubt anywhere anyone has any doubt yes or no if you have no doubt then we'll continue further tell me no ma'am no doubts okay what about others is it okay yes, yes. ma'am yes ma'am so if i give you any sentence will you be able to change it let's just try okay let's just uh, try for example if your sentence says he asked me to finish the work in time he asked me to finish the work in time change it first identify whether the sentence is an active voice or passive voice and accordingly change the sentence the ma'am this is passive, passive. change it do you need options he said to finish the work on time okay what about others what about others we got one answer next what happened what about others anyone he asked me to finish the work in time so who was asked to finish the work in time who was i to finish the work i so what should come in the front at the beginning i i right i then i was asked by him to finish the work in time i was asked i was asked by, by him to finish the work in time the sentence time, yes okay so first identify this one now who was asked <clears throat> so it is me so the sentence will be i was asked okay in this way you have to convert so you all need to practice very well okay based on the rules just practice you'll be able to answer so this was uh, about active and passive voice okay did you uh, practice from the practice sets given means have you started practicing from there Mom, where are these practice sets? 
means the one which you have means once you log in with your id and password you get practice sets na yeah i think there is nothing uh, there uh, today we opened it and only dairy subject was there okay i'll check once it, it is supposed to be there all right okay. next is it is supposed to be there just ask i think konirban sir will be able to guide you better but it is supposed to be there Okay. After an active and passive, what we will be starting with is tense. Okay. Uh, in case of error correction, or in uh, means grammatical error correction, or the, the sentence-wise error correction, you know, where a part of the sentence is given in bold, and you have to correct this. cases you need the grammar part so next is tense tell me what do you know about tense what do you know about tense past present future okay what else what is it basically it is time isn't it so we have the forms past present and future is time but future is also considered now uh, uh, we are aware of the forms like simple present present continuous present perfect present perfect continuous so if we talk about past same thing and if we talk about future same so what we'll do is we'll directly move on to the rules while discussing the rules we'll get one one form and based on that form we'll be doing error correction suppose if i say it has been raining for 2 pm second one it has been raining since 2 pm third one it has been raining for two hours fourth one it has been raining since two hours okay these are the four sentences you have to correct them or you have to identify correct sentences all right so tell me which one is correct e is correct b is correct a okay, what about others sir ma'am b a and b b b is correct okay what about others b ma'am okay what about d ma'am since two hours we don't know what is the current time okay Two since two p.m. Uh, there we know time, but we don't know if it is now four o'clock or six o'clock. So that's why D is not correct. All right. What about C? What about C? No, ma'am. It's same. for two or two hours we don't know the correct time so in case of a we are, we are provided with the correct time so that means a is also correct now for uh, there is problem with for okay 
See, first identify the tense. What is the tense here? Present, perfect. Present perfect. Continuous, right? That means what? It has been raining. That means something which has started in the past and which is continuing till now. Isn't it? That is what the sentence is trying to tell us. That the rain has started in the past and it is continuing till now. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Right? So whenever you have your sentence in present perfect continuous form, okay, or, uh, or suppose in past perfect continuous form, whatever. Now, you have to check what you have been provided with. You have been provided with the starting time or you have been provided with the duration. See, in this particular sentence B, what we have been provided with, we have been provided with the time. Exactly time has been mentioned that at 2 p.m. the rain has started and it has been raining means it is still now raining. Okay, so when you are provided with the starting time, in that case, what you will use since. Okay, so if the sentence is in present perfect continuous and we have to mention the starting time, then what we will use, we will use since. Same for past perfect continuous also. If we have to write down starting time, then what we will use? Since. Next, look at the other sentences where we are provided with duration. Okay. Two hours means what? Duration? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So we have been provided with duration. Whenever we want to mention duration, in that case, what we will use? We will use for. All right. In case of duration, we will use for. So that means B is correct. C is also correct. It has been raining for two hours and it has been raining since 2 p.m. Just identify the tense. This is in perfect continuous form. If you have to mention the starting time, then you'll use since. And if you have to mention duration, then we'll use for. Is this rule okay? Okay. Fine, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, the next sentence. The next sentence says, the patient died before the doctor came. Is it correct? Yes, ma'am, it seems correct. Okay, what about others? Is this sentence correct? The patient was, was has to be there. No? Okay, what about others?
मैम बिफोर द डॉक्टर कम Anyone else has any any other answer? Tell me. I got one option correct. Then the patient was died. Then can it be had died? Can you all hear me? Oh yes, ma'am. Yes, can it be had died? Um, who's at the head? The patient had. Okay, see, here in this particular sentence, okay, there are two actions. First action says the patient died. Okay. And the second action says the doctor came, right? There are two different actions. One is the patient died. Second one is the doctor came. Now, when the patient died, before the doctor has come, isn't it? So, when there are two different actions given in your sentence, and both the actions have occurred in past, then the one which occurs earlier is written in past perfect tense. The one which occurs earlier is written in past perfect tense. And the one which occurs later should be written in simple past tense. The patient died before the doctor came means what? Patient ki death pehle ho gayi thi, doctor ke aane se pehle. So, dono action kab ho hai? Dono action past me. So, if both the actions are occurring in past, the one which has occurred earlier, which one has occurred earlier? The death of the patient. So, that will be written in past perfect tense. And the one which occurs later, later which action occurred? The doctor came. That will be written in simple past tense. Now, correct the sentence. Did you understand the rule? Yes, ma'am. Now correct the sentence and tell me. How do we write past perfect form? Had. Ma'am, had plus V3. Past perfect means had plus V3 form, right? And if we convert this sentence, the sentence will be the patient had died. Had and die. V3 form means had died. Hmm. Before the doctor came. This is already hmm. in simple past tense. So the sentence yes, continues. Hmm. So the patient had died before the doctor came. Okay, this is your answer. All right. So what does the rule say? Whenever you have two different actions occurring in past, then you have to identify which one is occurring first. The one which occurs earlier will be written in past perfect tense and the one which occurs later will be written in simple past tense. Okay. Now, next sentence. The next sentence says,
this is the sentence i shall have been playing football for the next 2 years since 2022 tell me if the sentence is correct or not see we started the class at 4:30 but in between the connection was breaking so i'll continue the class it's already 5:30 but i'll continue okay so uh, cooperate with me tell me if the sentence is correct or not Uh, ma'am, I think the in the starting sentence in line, I shall have been there. Some correction needed to be done. Okay. What about others? Do you think this part is wrong? Okay. Let me give you slash. Uh, uh, wait. Let me give you slash. Um. This is how the sentence is given to you, and here it is written in this way. and this part is no error if you think entire sentence is correct now tell me what is the answer one is a okay others i shall be playing football okay that means you you are saying that in the a part there is some error shall be playing but uh, there is also confusion regarding this since 2022 this okay. is in the end since um, so we don't know if it is in present or or past which year is going on okay fine that is also a correct gesture to identify the er error in the sentence good what about others she has already given a point to think what about others instead of since uh, there my uh, there may come till okay That's till 2022 till 2022 what about others what about others see the question says i shall have been playing football now here as we have used uh, shall that means the sentence is in future first thing second shall have been playing means what future perfect continuous isn't it in our school uh, days i remember our uh, teachers saying that a uh, future um, mean simple future exist future continuous is also okay but this future perfect continuous form this doesn't exist do you agree with me yes yes ma'am yes but uh, now what uh, what we have seen in ibps exams or in this fso exams all those exams they are considering future perfect continuous form so first thing is this future perfect continuous form is correct okay now as the sentence is in future that means this activity will start it has not started second thing whichever in whichever year we are giving the exam that year is considered as the base so 2021 you will be appearing for your exam so 2021 is your base now the question continues you have to uh, think that this particular action will take place in future for the next two years it will start in future and it will continue for two years now it has been said since 2022 means up to this particular slash the sentence is correct why it is correct just now we read now when we use for we use for to mention duration two years is what duration yes ma'am right 
So we have used for for duration. So this part is correct. What we said that whenever we have to mention time, exactly we are mentioning. See here we are mentioning the year. So we will write since. But that was in the case of present tense and past tense. Now here the sentence is in future tense. Then what we'll do? We'll use since or we'll use till. Or there is some other word that you can use. Since means what? Something which has started in the past, isn't it? Mm, yes, ma'am. And what is the meaning of till? Continued. Uh, continue up to 2022. That means up to that particular time period, it will continue, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Is there any other word? Can we use here from? Which one is correct? Since, still, or from? See, just remember this. If you have sentence in future form, future perfect continuous form, then for is used to mention duration. The rule remains same in case of for. But whenever we have to mention time, in that case, we will use from. Means I will start playing from 2022 and I'll be playing for the next two years. Okay. So for, from is used when we are mentioning time. All right. So here the error was in the D part. Answer. Is the rule clear? When from we use? We will use from when the sentence is in present, sorry, future, perfect, continuous form. We will use from when we have to mention time, 2022, or suppose it is written from 3 p.m., from 4 p.m., something like that. Means if you're mentioning time, then you'll use from. And if you're mentioning duration, then you'll use for. Is the rule clear to you all? Yes, ma'am. Now, Next is, suppose if the sentence says, if you had gone with me, I had also gone to but. If you had gone with me, I had also gone to party. Tell me if the sentence is correct or not. Is the sentence correct? Ma'am, the, the sentence where I had also gone to party, and there some correction I think needed. I had that sentence. Okay. So you're saying in the second part of the sentence, there is some correction. All right. What about others? What do you think?
Anyone else? Do you think the sentence is wrong? There is any correction needed? See, in this particular sentence, there are two different uh, actions included. You know, first action is if you had gone with me and another action is I had also gone to party. So you have to consider both the actions individually. Let me give you option. If you had gone with me, I would have also gone to party. Second is, if you have gone with me, I had also gone to party. Third one is, if you had gone with me, I will have also gone to party or no error. Tell me, out of these four options, which one is correct? Uh, Ma'am, option one. Option one, okay. What about others? Which one is correct, you think? C, okay. What about others? C, ma'am. C. In this particular sentence, as I said, you have two different actions, okay? First action says, if you had gone with me. Second action says, I had also gone to party. Now, these two actions have been connected by two different clauses. Okay. What are those two clauses? Subordinate clause and principal clause. Subordinate and principal. These are the two different clauses. Okay. Now, in the subordinate clause, what you have if and in the principal clause, what you have? I. So here, if is mentioned here, that means what? This is the subordinate clause part. And I has been mentioned here. So this is the principal clause part. Okay. Now, both the clauses are written in which tense? They are written in past tense. If you have two different clauses, both are written in past tense, then what is the correct form of writing them? When you have subordinate clause, that subordinate clause will be written in past perfect tense. Past perfect tense means, see here it is already written had plus V3 form. Past perfect means what? Had plus V3, right? So with subordinate clause, we'll be using had plus V3 form. And with the principal clause, what we'll use? Principal clause should be written in future perfect tense. Future perfect tense means what? I had also, this is wrong. What will be the future perfect form? Would have also, isn't it? So number one is correct. If you have two different actions, both the actions are supposed to occur in past because of one, the other will occur. Means if you had gone with me, this is the connection. Agar ap mein saath jate to, that means, I have not gone to party, but I wanted to go. So the part where subordinate clause is present, that means if is present, that part will be written in past perfect tense. That is had plus V3 form, had gone. And the other part where the principal clause is written, that part will be written in future perfect tense. Future perfect means would have also gone to party. Is this, is this rule clear? Is this rule clear? Yes, if you have any sentence where there are two different clauses written in past tense, 
then the subordinate clause should be written in past perfect tense and the principal clause should be written in future perfect tense okay is this thing okay yes or no yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am all right so uh, we'll stop here and we'll continue with tenses in the next class all right okay ma'am anyone has any doubt or any confusion Ma'am, last rule is only applicable for uh, when two uh, two uh, clause is present in a uh, uh, past tense, right? Last rule is uh, means your voice actually broke. Just repeat the question. Ma'am, you, uh, your last rule that uh, both uh, in one sentence both uh, subordinate and uh, uh, principal clause principal need to be clause. in past. Yes, if both the actions are of past. actions mm. should be of past then okay. subordinate clause will be in past perfect tense and principal clause will be written in future, future perfect, perfect tense okay what about others anyone has any doubt uh ma'am in the sentence i shall have been playing football that previous one so ma'am yes. in that i shall have been ma'am why it is correct can you explain that i not. shall have been actually this is considered now means now future perfect continuous is also um, uh, considered to be correct earlier it was not a correct form but now it is considered to be correct form okay means earlier we used to write i shall be playing isn't it yes ma'am yes but now it is considered to be correct i shall have been playing is also correct uh so ma'am in exam if suppose uh, option came and i had like corrected that sentence also suppose in option came so will it reduce my marks or will it be considered correct no no if you are writing i shall be playing that means that the, the entire rule goes wrong na sentence has to be perfect uh, sentence has to be in perfect continuous form for using for and for using from Okay ma'am